Well, today we're going to be looking at a Stingray kit. Uh, so, we've just started the Jerry Anson podcast with my friend Eric. I'll put the link uh, in the description. Um, and we've just watched the first episode of Stingray. Um, and it made me want to build a Stingray kit. There's not that many out there. Um, there used to be like the Comet Miniatures one, Vacuform one, which I built up many years ago. And that's very expensive. But I managed to see this one uh, for a decent price on eBay and it's by a company called Lee. Oh. You just woken up? No, oh, she just woke up. Hello. Oh, she's not in the mood. Uh, so yeah, a company called Lee. I think it's a reissue of the Duo Shoe uh, Stingray kit. Well, let's have a look. So I will translate that and find out what it says. Atomic Submarine Stingray. Not much detail on it. Uh, it does say Requires 130 type motor and two UM3 size dry cells not included. But I think when I saw the photo of it on eBay that the motor is included. So let's have a look. So what do we get? Look at the instructions, we have a look at it in a second. Uh, so as is typical with Japanese kits, we don't get a lot of sprues. Um, interesting colour, green. That's more Thunderbird 2 colour. Uh, so you get the bottom of Stingray, mm, not a clear rate master. I'm have to do something about that. Um, actually, so you get Stingray itself. Now, I understand this isn't that accurate uh, a kit, but I think you can see the windows are quite big. I've seen people online where they've uh, sort of shorten the window length but I don't know I want to build an interior so I might leave the windows larger so you can see in more um, and what I'm going to try and do is build an interior but I'm going to try and do it on uh, the 3d printer so I'm going to try and design it in uh, uh, in I can't even think what software program I use now so long since I've used it um, so very nice crisp right. so you get some glue, do you reckon? Uh, some battery terminal parts. And then this, but I don't think this was meant to be in there because it doesn't say it's included, but it's the motor, the light and stuff. I presume that's um, grease. Because this one is meant to go in water. Um, it's got... Oh, it's fallen over. It's got um, a propeller in the, the rate master. And... Um, it goes, you can set it to go underwater. <clears throat> I'm not going to build it so it can go underwater because I think it would take the paint off. Ah, I see, yeah, it's Japanese instructions so it's backwards, isn't it? Going from back to front. No, it doesn't. That's weird. Um, so you get full instructions of how to do it. That's a lead weight or something. There you go, you can see, you can see there's propeller in it. So I think it's going to be a nice kit to build. It's going to be more of a static model than working on. So there you go, so you see the planes, if you move the, um, the, the sonar dish back, it will dive. Um, and then obviously the painting is going to be a big part of the kit. So I think it will make up into a nice size display piece with my other submarines up there on the top shelf. So um, what we're going to do is I'm probably going to have a go at doing the 3D uh, printing part, try and design it using a CAD program. Um, I'll show some of it, I won't show a lot of it because it's just me sat at a computer poking things. Um, but yeah, we'll do that and we'll come back. Hello me. So I've been uh, doing some computer work, being helped by my little Maggie. Uh, so, as you can see, I've created a 3D model of the Stingray control room. I've not put too much detail on it uh, because it's going to be tiny, um, but I think it should work. <clears throat> okay, so. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I've undercoated the um, cockpit, so I've designed a cockpit for it. 
So I'm just looking at, uh, at the parts. And this, this part here goes down through the cockpit, uh, the control room. And so you can use the, the, I don't know what they call it, the sonar dish. And that controls the uh, fins. But I'm not going to do it so that it can go underwater or anything. It's going to be a static model. So I'm going to cut that part off. Um, I'm not sure how yet because it's going to be quite difficult to get hold of. I might have to just try and use a Dremel or something. Um, but we're going to have a go at that. Um, and that sort of goes down through it. So I might leave that on there to connect the the uh, the sonar dish um, and see how it goes because that will go down through the the hole in the floorboard that I've done. Um, I've redone the the cockpit because this one broke. I'd made it too thin. So it's, as you can see, the trouble with resin parts is they do start to bend. So I've made I've re redone it, added a bit more detail on it now that I know that it works and will fit, and just made this much thicker. So it's quite a heavier part. But as you, as you can imagine, if that's in there, you don't want that big plastic thing going through it. Um, so that's what we're going to do next. So you can see, I've just tied up window, so the glass in, and you'll see a nice bit of the cockpit, um, and there's a bulb that goes above it. So I think it will it'll actually look quite nice. So I've just used my snippy snips to snip away the the piece that was protruding in and I think what I'm going to do is actually fill it so I'm going to put a piece of plastic card over here and then fill her and then sand it down um, I might try and correct this shape as well a bit I've seen people where they've chopped this off and then moved it back but I don't, mm, don't know whether I'll do that or not so let's have a look at that photo of Stingray well, to be honest, actually, it doesn't. It's about the right place for it, to be honest. Um, it does have a slope on it, but the shape is completely wrong, so I think that would be just madness to try and create. I might as well just have printed my own. Um, so what I'm going to do, if you notice, there's a tube on the back of this, so I'm going to fill all this, like I said, and then put a plastic tube on it to put the, the, the sonar in. Um, so I think it would look good. Okay, so I painted the inside red, so as you can see I've got a panel. I'm not going to fill it, I think it looks quite nice as like a sort of hatch detail. I've glued uh, a piece of tube there, so it more closely resembles a TV one. Then what we're going to do is I'm going to mask that off and do the blue, because I'm going to have to fit all of the cockpit and paint the outside before I stick this on to the bottom piece. So it's going to be a bit of things. I also want a decent join around here to be able to sand it probably. So I'm going to have to paint this and then try and finish, mask it off, keep it safe. So it'll be interesting. So let's see. The first job is going to be to uh, mask this and then undercoat it in primer. So just simple wad up some uh, paper, pop it in. So I'm just going to add to coat that and then we'll come back and do a bit of spraying. Okay, so that sprayed really well. I just used uh, Vallejo Blue, it's just Azu Blue. Um, thin down, you should find after thin Vallejo, um, I think it's covered quite nicely. I want to try and do this all sprayed rather than hand painted because it never looks right if you hand paint it, but yeah, I, I quite like that. I was coming up to the model room and look who it is. It's Maggie! Hello! What are you doing? What do you think of Stingray? No, it smells of paint, doesn't it? Okay, so painted the interior. It's all looking very nice. Uh, I don't know how much of it will actually show. 
So what I've got to do is I've blanked off the water in this because this is meant to be a, uh, you know, travelling through the water. So it's got to have somewhere to pull the air in to push it out the back because um, the propeller goes in there. So I've just blanked them off. Uh, so the next job will be sticking the windows in, sticking the base in with the light in, but that means that then has to be glued to there. So that will be the the next job to do that. Um, it's not a lot left on construction. Most of it then after that is uh, painting. Okay, so I've stuck the glass in. Um, the fit was horrendous. Uh, in the end, I had to use two-part epoxy just to get it to stick because it just doesn't touch. I mean, when this was a an actual submarine, this was meant to be the air container, so it was meant to be perfectly sealed. There's no way you could do it. And I also rather horribly got a little bit of epoxy on one of the windows, but it just means phones. <laughs> greasy face against it or something. So the next job is going to be to stick the bulb in. So I've just trimmed it off so that I can actually fit it properly and glue it in. Might use hot glue. Uh, might just use epoxy on that one. And then it's going to be a case of popping the control room in. Uh, and then that's sort of sealed. And then I can seal the two halves together. And I'm going to have to be really careful not to uh, get any paint or scratch anything on the windows. Um, the painting on this is going to be a very intensive masking job, I think. Um, but we'll give it a go. Okay, so I stuck that in with epoxy. So I think it's looking pretty good. I just got to reattach the wires, make sure it all works, and then glue the two halves together um, so that uh, that's all then sealed in. Okay, so I've stuck them all together, sanded all this down, looking good. Uh, so I'm going to have to mask off all of this and these bits, and then we can uh, primer the rest, and then start masking it off to uh, to paint. So what I'm going to do is you've got some thin Tamiya masking tape, so I'm just going to use that. There you go. I'm going to put paper over that, uh, and then we can undercoat everything. Okay, so I've uh, masked off the bits I want. I'm going to have to mask off these bits as well, because I want to keep them in the blue. And then we're going to undercoat it. Okay, so I've done the undercoat and the silver. And I'm going to mask off all the next bits, all the blue bits and the yellow bits. Well, I've took all the masking off. Um, didn't go as well as I'd hoped because some of the paint has bled under the masking, which is a bit of annoyance. So I'm going to have to touch a bit of it up by hand. And it's really the wrong shape to get the correct colouring on. So I've got, got some bits I'm going to hand paint. I need to get the stickers on, and I think they're completely the wrong size. Uh, you don't get any of the, the one under here, so I need to paint the circle. Um, and then I'm going to varnish it and probably call it a day. It's been a bit of a struggle, this one, because it's not very accurate. And it's not very sort of well put together. You can uh, It shows its age. Um, we're going to paint the Rate Master silver. Um, but it'll be okay. It'll be okay. Okay, so I finished the model, and this was a difficult one for me. Um, everything just seemed to go wrong. Like, so when I was masking off, um, the I painted the silver first, and that was a big mistake, because the silver I used just didn't take the other paints particularly well. And I should have undercoated between, but that just creates thick uh, lines between the masking. So if I was doing it again, uh, I would probably spray the whole thing yellow and then mask off from that outwards um, and do the silver last. Oh, we've got some sunlight. Got some sun! Um, let's try to get out of the sun now. There we go. Uh, so I would do that differently. Um, this kit uh, is... So I've done some research on it. So it's, it's the old Midori kit. 
uh, been reissued. Um, so that was like late 60s, early 70s Japanese kit. And it was aimed more as a toy than a kit. And you can tell it's, it's like Douglas Adams would say, it's almost but not quite entirely unlike Stingray. So there's enough to make you think of Stingray, but the actual shapes are all wrong. Um, so the windows are too big, so you can't get the stripe on. You can see um, the shape is wrong. So you, when you're trying to mask it off, it's just very, very difficult. Doing the front end was super difficult. These are not big enough. Um, but it does give an overall appearance of Stingray. So I'm quite happy with it in that respect. Um, later versions, they did away with the uh, toy parts. So because this is meant to go underwater, you put it in the bathtub and it, it sinks down and then it hits this and pushes the water, pushes this back and that tilts these fins and then it goes up again. So it's going up and down all the time. And it's been designed for that, I think. Um, be interesting to make one up to do that because I don't think it would work very well the way it's uh, sort of been designed. Um, but, you know, it, it is what it is, as they say. Um, the stickers are just thick stickers, so I can't really get a close-up shot on it, but I had to cut right round them. Um, the fin, I had to paint the number on because the stickers come in black and it's the wrong colour. So a lot of things wrong with it, but a couple of things I'm really happy with. So let me just turn the... So underneath you have left the switch, so it does have uh, a lighted cockpit, and I don't know if you can see in there, I'll try and get some uh, closer shots with the phone, so you can see, can you see in there, is it going to focus, so you can see various control panels in the background uh, with the little seats so I'm happy with that so yeah I'm happy with the interior that came out really well enjoyed doing that I might try and do a bigger one um, overall it's a nice stingray-ish model uh, I didn't do the writing on the underside because I just haven't got any letter set for that size and I'm not going to hand paint it it's going to look terrible so I'll do that when we get some letter set. Um, if you're looking for a Stingray kit, I would probably, it's much more expensive, but I'd go with the Comet Miniatures, uh, or perhaps one of the Warp ones. Uh, the Midori, or as this one is, it's reissued by Lee. They're just too toy-like, really, if you want a scale model. But they, if you just want a representation, because I haven't got any Stingray stuff, really. So I'm, I'm happy that I've now got a model Stingray. You can sit up on the shelf with my uh, sea views. Um, so yeah, uh, if you want to see more Anderson kits, um, I think the next one I've got on my list to do is Fire Flash from Thunderbirds. So if you want to see videos for that, let me know. Um, if you've got a Stingray recommendation, I mean if you've got the Airfix one. Oh, lucky. At, from what I've seen, that's much closer in shape. Um, not, not bad. You know, you, you can pick them up quite cheaply. I think I paid 30 for this. So you can pick them up fairly cheaply, these Lee ones. But just be prepared, they're not the greatest <laughs> kit to make. Hardly anything fits together. But anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you can. Um, we've got a Patreon uh, page now, so if you want to help us out there, I'll put the link in the description. And I'll see you again next time. Thanks then. Bye.